Hi. <laughs> Little ass grab. Um, so, how's it going? Can't kill the while loop. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Um, hello. Uh, so, I haven't been doing anything with Node for, for a couple months now. And um, Michael was like, oh, you have to give a talk. And I was like, what, what will I talk about? Um, so, I'm going to talk about uh, kind of the early days of Node. Um, uh, like before it was released, and just kind of walked through. I just kind of went through my old live journal and and uh, kind of looked at what sort of projects I was working on and stuff. And well, maybe it's interesting and maybe not, but uh, I'll do it anyway. Um, so <coughs> uh, Node was uh, influenced by a ton of things. Like I, I I spent kind of years just kind of dicking around with with various uh, programs um, and. This is probably an incomplete list, but but at least this these these software uh, listed here is I was looking at be, before I, I got uh, started with Node. Um, so anyway, uh, a long time ago, I was a grad student uh, in uh, I was in a PhD program in in upstate New York, trying to do uh, algebraic topology. Um, I studied things like this, uh, which is. Uh, really weird uh, mathematical shapes. And uh, for some reason, I, I thought that this was a, was a good thing to do with my life. Um, <laughs> one of the things that, that I did, probably the, the only, well, this isn't even useful, but one of, one of the only uh, interesting projects that, that came out of this, or, yeah, um, was in, in point set topology, you, you you have this concept of a topological space, and you have all these adjectives that describe this space. And, and so, so this, is, this is a graph that describes all these adjectives. And, and you have all these theorems that's like, you know, if something is Hausdorff and compact, then it's also blah. Um, and I was really interested in, in the, the fact that, that you had just, just kind of this, this really simple topological space with all these adjectives, and, and you, you, you had these re really uh, intricate interrelations between them. So I made that. Um, but after, after a couple of years in grad school, um, I was becoming more and more annoyed with it and uh, would find myself just uh, grading a lot and giving students Fs and sprinkling anthrax onto their homework <laughs> and whatnot. Um, and eventually, uh, I just dropped out. Um, so here is a picture of, of all of my work that I did over three years. I just kind of threw it all in the trash can, like in a fit one day, much like how I left Node. Um, and uh, <laughs> bought a one-way ticket to Chile and went there, um, really knowing not what it, I was doing. Um, had no money. Um, so yeah, I, I, I arrived there and got an apartment and uh, kind of sat down finally after, you know, moving and stuff and was like, okay, well, what am I doing with my life now? Um, and so I, well, I, I pulled this up from my life journal uh, shortly after I arrived in Chile. Each night I've been working until the cold winter morning in order to discover a method of communicating via clouds. As of yet, I'm unsuccessful. Um, not really sure what this project was about, but uh, <laughs> something about encoding, encoding words into circles and then I was going to put it on a website and then people could like somehow uh, decipher it, possibly. Didn't work out. Um, back to those Hausdorff compact uh, topological spaces. Uh, I was still kind of thinking about that stuff, and I, I decided I would make a website that would have all of the various theorems of, of topology in it. So, so you would have all, all of the, the adjectives that describe topological spaces, and then you would have examples of, of various topological spaces with proofs that describe if they are or are not uh, compact or Hausdorff or any of the adjectives. And then I would have like, a, like an automated theorem prover that would kind of fill in the gaps. Um, and so uh, I used Ruby on Rails to do this. And so th this, was, this was really my first website, um, sitting down and, and trying to make this, this, uh, this topological uh, space website, which went nowhere and, and was an utter failure. Um, but I got into Ruby on Rails, uh, which, which was kind of the beginning. 
Um, <clears throat> in uh, December 2006, I moved to Buenos Aires, and I, I met an American there, and um, he gave me a contract to work on, on a snowboarding website. And so, so like, I finally had some source of income, a small amount of money. Um, and just shortly after, like, I, I, I started working on this website, and, and we, we had all these, these things where, like, people could upload photos to the website and, like, of them snowboarding and, and whatnot. And I got really into the upload progress bar problem, which in 2006 was, was not really a thing yet. Like, like, when you upload something to a website, right, you, it, previously it was like you got no feedback. You would just, you would hit submit on the form and it, it would just like freeze up for a while. I mean, now we have these upload progress bars and like, this was like hot technology in 2006. Like, how, how do you actually give some feedback to the user about how much of the file has been uploaded? Um, yeah, I mean, people didn't really upload things via HTTP. That was what FTP was for. Um, and uh, I think a, lot, a big part of it was because you didn't get feedback of when you uploaded stuff. Um, yeah, so, so I found an entry where I was like, well, you know, this is pretty ridiculous, the way that upload progress bars work. They're making AJAX calls to the server asking it how much it has uploaded. I found this ridiculous because I thought that the DOM should actually have some idea of how much of the file should be sent. <sighs> yes, well, I've only got 20 minutes, so I really have to blaze here. Um, then I moved to Germany. I realize this is not a German beer, but it's the only beer I drank in Germany. And to me, Germany and beer just kind of go hand in hand because you have these half-liter bottles, which you just kind of drink all day long. Um, well, so then I started working on web servers. I, I can't really remember exactly why. I think it's because I saw Thin. Do you guys know Thin, the Ruby web server? Uh, it was Event Machine plus uh, the parser from Mongrel. And it, I was just so impressed with how small and compact this web server was. I was like, wow, I, I have to do that. So I, I made this web server called Ebb, which uh, was more or less the same thing as Thin, except instead of Event Machine, it used LibEV. Um, and of course, I was really obsessed about performance and, and tried to make it really fast. Um, eventually, Ebb didn't go anywhere. Uh, I, I, I kind of just got fed up with, with Ruby and, and, and couldn't really deal with it. Um, but it was... It's how I got into LibEV. I made a project. I, I made this web framework. Uh, you know, it, I, th I think all of this stuff is, is kind of going in the direction of, you know, working on a website and just realizing how terrible it was to work with this stuff and, and trying to, to make this nicer. So I had a little web framework called Squeezebox, which went nowhere. Um, but w what did go somewhere was, was LibEB, which was... The, the C parts of, of the Ebb web server, I, I just kind of removed the Ruby part, and I thought, well, you know, what if we could just do web servers in C themselves? Um, and so LibEbb was LibEV plus an HTTP parser plus, you know, some random other stuff, some, some hooks into SSL and, and whatnot. It didn't really work very well, uh, but it was basically the precursor to LibUV that we have now. Of course, LibUV does a lot more and supports Windows, which is a big deal. Um, yeah. Um, so 2007, Cologne. I'm working on a new HTTP, HTML templating language using JavaScript. The language uses indention white space to build an XML hierarchy, the Hamel syntax. In and around the XML, one may use JavaScript for loops, conditionals, subroutines. The, spelled badly, um, the attributes of the XML node are JavaScript objects. I've written a proof of concept in Ruby using Regal and SpiderMonkey. It will allow front-end developers to work independently of server-side programmers. This was, what does this sound like? Like Jade, right? <laughs> so so I, 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 was, uh, I had this idea that, that somehow the web server could be sealed off from the user and you could just kind of work with these templates. And I, I loved Haml, but it, this was kind of the start of getting into JavaScript stuff. Um, <clears throat> so in uh, 2008 and 2009, uh, Engine Yard contracted me to, to start building some stuff for them. And the first project was this Nginx load balancer. So Nginx is this web server, and they, what they really wanted to do was um, 
allow Nginx to load balance in a similar way that hob proxy works. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I hope I put the graph in here. Um, so, so let me show the graph first. So this was this was benching Nginx in front of in front of a blog, uh, Mephesto, which is some Ruby thing. Um, and the top the top row is is one concurrent user, and the bottom row is thirty concurrent users. And the 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 vertical axis is response time, and the the horizontal axis is time. And so with the with thirty concurrent users, you see response time like as 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 minutes pass, like it just gets worse and worse and worse, right? Which was kind of intuitively what what people knew about Rails, which is just like when you have a load on it, like over time, it's just getting slower and slower and slower. You know, at least in 2009, this was the case. Um, and uh, if you just put one user on it, it was fine. Um, and so, I mean, what 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 Ezra, my my boss at Engine Yard, knew and why he contracted me to do this was was that. Rails couldn't handle concurrent users stacked up on it, right? It, when when you when when Rails Rails would continue to accept new connections, uh, but it was able only able to handle one request at a time, right? It has this this uh, what do they call it? Like a request lock or something, where they can only process one request at a time. And because Ruby's threading model, at least in MRI, was so bad that so, somehow it it, it would. Uh, you know, take resources away from the thread that was actually running, right? Ruby, Ruby MRI 1.8 has has really wacky threads. So, the project, the the Nginx load balancer, was was to, uh, you know, you're load balancing across a bunch of Rails processes, and previously it would just kind of round robin the requests into into all of the servers, and this this allowed you to say, you know, send one to there. Queue up all the requests inside Nginx and only give the next request to the Nginx, to the to the Rails process when when it had come back. All right, well, whatever. Um, <clears throat> my next project from from Engine Yard was was making a, a fuse file system, um, and so so using some of the components of of libeb, uh, which had become kind of this this little networking library, um, I tied together this with fuse and uh, a uh, key value database which no longer exists uh, to make a, a file system so the, the idea was was that okay we're going to have these key value databases these these NoSQL databases where where you only get get and set properties um, but you know what can we make a postix uh, file system on top of this and so <clears throat> I used fuse with this and fuse has this really really nice low level Interface where it's you can do completely non-blocking. You can implement each of the POSIX routines in a completely non-blocking way, and so so doing this, you can you can really make this this whole file system interface in one thread, and you you never really block anything. Um, yes. Uh, oh, and I have a screenshot here because I, I believe that you know this comma first style that Isaac uh, promotes so heavily in JavaScript. I think it actually began with this project because. Um, well, I had this really weird C style, where I would put commas before this. I know I can I can see you cringing, right? Um, it it was pretty terrible, but that that kind of I I was a fan of that for a while. Um, <clears throat> so yes, uh, in in February, uh, uh, I I wrote in my live journal, I'm going to. Right, a special thin web server tied to V8, mongrel for V8, if you will. Um, and I'm going to write a special evented TCP library for, for V8, probably wrapping lib uh, OI, OI, which was I renamed libeb. Um, does this exist in the public? Certainly Google has such a thing. Um, bundle them with, with an HTTP API for making server-side documents. I think this design will be extremely efficient and support very high loads. So th this was this was the the first uh, instance where I, I was thinking about Node. Um, so this is this is me with with uh, my friend uh, Tim Becker in in Vienna um, at a conference, very much like this one. Me painfully hungover, like I will be tomorrow. Um, and uh, Tim and I Tim and I have a lot of emails shooting back and forth around this time, where uh, we're kind of discussing the ideas of this project and. 
Tim was the, the original person that, that put me on to, to V8. Um, so, right, March 1st. Okay, I'm going to do it in JavaScript. The main thing is TCP. All will follow from there. Maybe we'll just use databases instead of file systems. We can cache image, image data inside JavaScript if need be. So the TCP API will be this, uh, which looks horribly uh, pre pretty terrible and simple uh, compared to what we have now. Um, and here's an example of connecting to google.com with, with that API. So I think this was the original thing. Um, <clears throat> and I will implement the DOMS timer thing, set timeout so that it uses libEV timers. Thoughts? I think this is extremely simple and will solve the world's problems. <laughs> Tim, Tim Becker writes, it is extremely simple. It feel, feels like it's missing something, but I can't think of what it is at the moment, apart from close. Anyway, I need to pack, see you. Uh, to Tim, so the idea is shifting in my head. Instead of presenting this primarily as a web server with some extension libraries for TCP, let's present it as a set of evented libraries. Initially, we will provide TCP connect, HTTP.serve. Later, we'll provide uh, TCP.serve, HTTP.connect, MySQL.connect. This will be the framework that, will event that we eventually build our own HTTP-only web server where you upload JavaScript to change the behavior through HTTP. Uh, side note, I, I was thinking of this very much in terms of CouchDB, and so I, I originally thought that there would be a web server, and the way that you kind of interacted with it would be you would upload JavaScript, and that would change the behavior of, of, of the uh, responses. Um, but it, we'll, we'll release this as a set of libraries initially. Maybe call it NetV8. Uh, would be nice to have some way of loading external JavaScript files, perhaps through TCP. I hadn't figured out the module system yet. Um, <clears throat> to Tim, better name, Node? So. <laughs> um, and then this is, this is the original readme from, from Node uh, from March 1st. Whereas the usage of threads have complicated computer programming, and whereas V8 comes free of I.O. and threads, where, and whereas most operating systems do not provide asynchronous file access. Now, therefore, this set of server and client libraries were made to build simple and fast servers. They are provided free of charge under a permissive simple license. Submitted by Raya Dahl, Tim Becker, March 1st, 2009. Um, this is a picture of me uh, working on Node, possibly, uh, in, <laughs> in, in Germany. Uh, so, so had this idea, talked about with Tim. Unfortunately, Tim, beyond doing like one benchmark, did not actually contribute to Node at all, um, but was there in spirit. Um, and I, I just worked feverishly on this for, for months on end. Um, and the, the first application that I built with Node, which I never actually released, was uh, an IRC client, which, which was on the web browser. It's supposed to look a lot like IRSSI. And so I, I had this idea that we could just run this thing. And um, yeah, uh, I think this is it. So then finally, the initial announcement Announcement was was uh, in uh, uh, June. So Node is a new server-side JavaScript project. Provides purely event-based interface to I/O, TCP server and client standard set timeout and set interval t timers, asynchronous file I/O, HTTP server and client. Node's main focus is on performance and efficiency. So that is it. And you can't ask questions. So thank you. Thank you.